The Book of Judith, Chapter 1 In the twelfth year of the reign of Nebuchadnezzar, who reigned in Nineveh, the great city, in the days of Arphaxad, which reigned over the Medes and Ecbatane, and built in Ecbatane walls round about of stones whom three cubits broad and six cubits long, and made the height of the wall seventy cubits, and the breadth thereof fifty cubits, and set the towers thereof upon the gates of it an hundred cubits high, and the breadth thereof in the foundation three score cubits. And he made the gates thereof, even gates that were raised to the height of seventy cubits, and the breadth of them was forty cubits, for the going forth of his mighty armies, and for the setting in array of his footmen. Even in those days King Nebuchadnezzar made war with King Arphaxad in the great plain, which is the plain in the borders of Ragau. And there came unto him all they that dwelt in the hill country, and all they that dwelt by Euphrates, and Tigris, and Hidaspes, and the plain of Arioch, the king of the Elimeans. And very many nations of the sons of Kalod assembled themselves to the battle. Then Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians, sent unto all that dwelt in Persia, and to all that dwelt westward, and to those that dwelt in Cilicia, and Damascus, and Lebanus, and Antilibanus, and to all that dwelt upon the sea coast, and to those among the nations that were of Carmel, and Galaad, and the higher Galilee, and the great plain of Esdrelum, and to all that were in Samaria, and the cities thereof, and beyond Jordan unto Jerusalem, and Batana, and Chelis, and Cades, and the river of Egypt, and Taphnes, and Ramesse, and all the land of Gesem, until ye come beyond Tanis and Memphis, and to all the inhabitants of Egypt, until ye come to the borders of Ethiopia. But all the inhabitants of the land made light of the commandment of Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians. Neither went they with him to the battle, for they were not afraid of him. Yea, he was before them as one man, and they sent away his ambassadors from them without effect and with disgrace. Therefore Nebuchadnezzar was very angry with all this country, and swore by his throne and kingdom that he would surely be avenged upon all those coasts of Cilicia and Damascus and Syria, and that he would slay with the sword all the inhabitants of the land of Moab and the children of Ammon and all Judea and all that were in Egypt till you come to the borders of the two seas. Then he marched in battle array with his power against King Arphaxad in the seventh year, and he prevailed in his battle. For he overthrew all the power of Arphaxad, and all his horsemen, and all his chariots, and became lord of his cities, and came unto Ecbatane, and took the towers, and spoiled the streets thereof, and turned the beauty thereof into shame. He took also Arphaxad in the mountains of Ragau, and smote him through with his darts and destroyed him utterly that day. So he returned afterward to Nineveh, both he and all his company of sundry nations being a very great multitude of men of war. And there he took his ease and banqueted, both he and his army, an hundred and twenty days. Chapter 2 and in the eighteenth year, the two and twentieth day of the first month, 
There was talk in the house of Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians, that he should, as he said, avenge himself on all the earth. So he called unto him all his officers and all his nobles, and communicated with them his secret counsel, and concluded the afflicting of the whole earth out of his own mouth. Then they decreed to destroy all flesh that did not obey the commandment of his mouth. And when he had ended his counsel, Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians, called Holofernes, the chief captain of his army, which was next unto him, and said unto him, Thus said the great king, the lord of the whole earth, Behold, you shall go forth from my presence, and take with thee men that trust in their own strength, of footmen a hundred and twenty thousand, and the number of horses with their riders twelve thousand. And you shall go against all the west country, because they disobeyed my commandment. And you shall declare unto them, that they prepare for me earth and water, for I will go forth in my wrath against them, and will cover the whole face of the earth with the feet of mine army, and I will give them for a spoil unto them, so that their slain shall fill their valleys and brooks, and the river shall be filled with their dead till it overflow. And I will lead them captives to the utmost parts of all the earth, you therefore shall go forth and take beforehand for me all their coasts, and if they will yield themselves unto thee, you shall reserve them for me to the day of their punishment. But concerning them that rebel, let not thine eyes spare them, but put them to the slaughter and spoil them wheresoever you goest. For as I live, and by the power of my kingdom, whatsoever I have spoken, that will I do by my hand. And take heed that you transgress none of the commandments of thy Lord, but accomplish them fully, as I have commanded thee, and defer not to them. Then Holofernes went forth from the presence of his Lord, and called all the governors and captains, and the officers of the army of Assur. And he mustered the chosen men for the battle, as his Lord had commanded him, unto an hundred and twenty thousand and twelve thousand archers on horseback. And he ranged them, as a great army is ordered for the war. And he took camels and asses for their carriages, a very great number, and sheep, and oxen, and goats without number for their provision, and plenty of victual for every man of the army, and very much gold and silver out of the king's house. Then he went forth in all his power to go before King Nebuchadnezzar in the voyage, and to cover all the face of the earth westward with their chariots, and horsemen, and their chosen footmen. A great number also of sundry countries came with them like locusts and like the sand of the earth, for the multitude was without number. And they went forth of Nineveh three days' journey toward the plain of Bechdeleth, and pitched from Bechdeleth near the mountain, which is at the left hand of the upper Cilicia. Then he took all his army, his footmen, and his horsemen, and chariots, and went from thence into the hill country, and destroyed food and lewd, and spoiled all the countries of Rasses, and the children of Ismael, which were toward the wilderness at the south of the land of the Chelians. Then he went over Euphrates, and went through Mesopotamia, and destroyed all the high cities that were upon the river Arbonea, till ye come to the sea. And he took the borders of Cilicia, and killed all that resisted him, and came to the borders of Japheth, which were towards the south over against Arabia. 
he compassed also all the children of Medan and burned up their tabernacles and spoiled their sheep coats. Then he went down into the plain of Damascus in the time of wheat harvest and burned up all their fields and destroyed their flocks and herds. Also, he spoiled their cities and utterly wasted their countries and smote all their young men with the edge of the sword. Therefore, the fear and dread of him fell upon all the inhabitants of the sea coast, which were in Sidon and Tyrus, and them that dwelt in Sur and Okina, and all that dwelt in Jimnaan, and they that dwelt in Azotus and Ascalon feared him greatly. Chapter 3 So they sent ambassadors unto him to treat of peace, saying, Behold, we, the servants of Nebuchadnezzar, the great king, lie before thee. Use us as shall be good in thy sight. Behold, our houses and all our places, and all our fields of wheat, and flocks, and herds, and all the lodges of our tents lie before thy face. Use them as it pleaseth thee. Behold, even our cities and the inhabitants thereof are thy servants. Come and deal with them as seemeth good unto thee. So the men came to Holofernes and declared unto him after this manner. Then came he down toward the sea coast, both he and his army, and set garrisons in the high cities, and took out of them chosen men for aid. So they and all the country round about received with them garlands, with dances, and with timbrels. Yet he did cast down their frontiers, and cut down their groves. For he had decreed to destroy all the gods of the land, that all nations should worship Nebuchadnezzar only and that all tongues and tribes should call upon him as God. Also, he came over against Estrielon, near unto Judea, over against the great strait of Judea, and he, pinched between, he pitched between Geba and Scythopolis, and there he tarried a whole month, that he might gather together all the carriages of his army. Chapter 4 Now the children of Israel that dwelt in Judea heard all that Holofernes, the chief captain of Nebuchadnezzar, king of the Assyrians, had done to the nations. And after what manner he had spoiled all their temples and brought them to naught. Therefore they were exceedingly afraid of him and were troubled for Jerusalem and for the temple of the Almighty, their God. For they were newly returned from the captivity, and all the people of Judea were lately gathered together, and the vessels and the altar and the house were sanctified after the profanation. Therefore they sent into all the coasts of Samaria, and the villages, and the Betharon, and Belmon, and Jericho, and to Kobo, and Esora, and to the valley of Salem, and possessed themselves beforehand of all the tops of the high mountains, and fortified the villages that were in them, and laid up victuals for the provision of war, for their fields were of late reaped. Also Joachim the high priest, which was in those days in Jerusalem, wrote to them that dwelt in Bethulia and Betomis them, which is over against Estrialon, toward the open country, near to Dothan, charging them to keep the passages of the hill country, for by them there was an entrance into Judea, and it was easy to stop them that would come up, because the passage was straight, for two men at the most. And the children of Israel did as Joachim the high priest had commanded them, with the ancients of all the people of Israel which dwelt at Jerusalem. Then 
Every man of Israel cried to the Almighty with great fervency, and with great vehemency did they humble their souls, both they and their wives and their children and their cattle and every stranger and hireling and their servants bought with money put sackcloth upon their loins. Thus every man and woman and the little children and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the temple and cast ashes upon their heads and spread out their sackcloth before the face of the Almighty. Also they put sackcloth about the altar and cried to the Almighty power of Israel all with one consent earnestly that he would not give their children for a prey and their wives for a spoil and the cities of their inheritance to destruction and the sanctuary to profanation and reproach and for the nations to rejoice at. So the Most High heard their prayers and looked upon their afflictions for the people fasted many days in all Judea and Jerusalem before the sanctuary of the Most High Almighty. And Joachim the high priest and all the priests that stood before the Most High and they which ministered unto the Most High had their loins girt with sackcloth and offered the daily burnt offerings with the vows and free gifts of the people and had ashes on their metries and cried unto the Most High with all their power that he would look upon all the house of Israel graciously. Chapter 5 Then it was declared to Holofernes, the chief captain of the army of Assur, that the children of Israel had prepared for war, and had shut up the passages of the hill country, and had fortified all the tops of the high hills, and had laid impediments in the champaign countries wherewith he was very angry and called all the princes of Moab and the captains of Ammon and all the governors of the sea coast. And he said unto them, Tell me now, ye sons of Canaan, who this people is that dwelleth in the hill country, and what are the cities that they inhabit, and what is the multitude of their army, and wherein is their power and strength? And what king is set over them, or captain of their army? And why have they determined not to come and meet me more than all the inhabitants of the west? Then said Achior, the captain of all the sons of Ammon, Let my lord now hear a word from the mouth of thy servant, and I will declare unto thee the truth concerning this people, which dwelleth near thee, and inhabiteth the hill countries. And there shall no lie come out of the mouth of thy servant. This people are descended of the Chaldeans, and they sojourn heretofore in Mesopotamia, because they would not follow the gods of their fathers which were in the land of Chaldea. For they left the way of their ancestors, and worshipped the God of heaven, the God whom they knew. So they cast them out from the face of their gods, and they fled into Mesopotamia, and sojourned there many days. Then their god commanded them to depart from the place where they sojourned, and to go into the land of Canaan, where they dwelt and were increased with gold and silver, and with very much cattle. But when a famine covered all the land of Canaan, they went down into Egypt and sojourned there while they were nourished and became there a great multitude so that one could not number their nation. Therefore the king of Egypt rose up against them and dealt subtly with them and brought them low with laboring and brick and made them slaves. Then they cried unto their God and he smote all the land of Egypt with incurable plagues. So the Egyptians cast them out of their sight. And God dried the Red Sea before them and brought them to Mount Sinai and Cadiz Berne and cast forth all that dwelt in the wilderness. So they dwelt in the land of the Amorites and they destroyed by their strength all them of Esabon. 
and passing over Jordan they possessed all the hill country. And they cast forth before them the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite, and the Sichemite, and all the Gergesites, and they dwelt in that country many days. And whilst they sinned not before their God, they prospered, because the Almighty that hateth iniquity was with them. But when they departed from the way which he appointed them, they were destroyed in many battles very sore, and were led, ca and were led captives into a land that was not theirs. And the temple of their God was cast to the ground, and their cities were taken by the enemies. But now are they returned to their God, and are come up from the places where they were scattered, and have possessed Jerusalem, where their sanctuary is, and are seated in the hill country, for it was desolate. Now therefore, my Lord and Governor, if there be any error in this people, and they sin against their God, let us consider that this shall be their ruin, and let us go up, and we shall overcome them. But if there be no iniquity in their nation, let my Lord now pass by, lest their Almighty defend them, and the Most High be for them, and we become a reproach before all the world. And when Achior had finished these sayings, all the people standing round about the tent murmured, and the chief men of Holofernes, and all that dwelt by the seaside, and in Moab, spake that he should kill him. For say they, We will not be afraid of the face of the children of Israel, for lo, it is a people that have no strength nor power for a strong battle. Now therefore, Lord Holofernes, we will go up, and they shall be a prey to be devoured of all thine army. Chapter 6 and when the tumult of men that were about the council was ceased, Holofernes, the chief captain of the army of Assur, said unto Achior and all the Moabites before all the company of other nations, And who are you, Achior, and the hirelings of Ephraim, that you has prophesied among us as today, and has said that we should not make war with the people of Israel, because their God will defend them? And who is God but Nebuchadnezzar? He will send his power and will destroy them from the face of the earth, and their God shall not deliver them. But we, his servants, will destroy them as one man, for they are not able to sustain the power of our horses. For with them we will tread them underfoot, and their mountains shall be drunken with their blood, and their fields shall be filled with their dead bodies and their footsteps shall not be able to stand before us. For they shall utterly perish, saith King Nebuchadnezzar, Lord of all the earth. For he said, None of my words shall be in vain. And you, Achior, a hireling of Ammon, which has spoken these words in the day of thine iniquity, shall see my face no more from this day until I take vengeance of this nation that came out of Egypt. And then shall the sword of mine army and the multitude of them that serve me pass through thy sides, and thou shalt fall among their slain when I return. Now therefore my servants shall bring thee back into the hill country, and shall set thee in one of the cities of the passages, and you shall not perish till you be destroyed with them. And if you persuade thyself in thy mind that they shall not be taken, let not thy countenance fall. I have spoken it, and none of my words shall be in vain. Then Holofernes commanded his servants that waited in his tent to take Achior and bring him to Bethulia and deliver him into the hands of the children of Israel. So his servants took him and brought him out of the camp into the plain. And they went from the midst of the plain into the hill country, and came into the fountains that were under Bethulia. And when the men of the city saw them, they took up their weapons, and went out of the city to the top of the hill. 
And every man that used a sling kept them from coming up by casting of stones against them. Nevertheless, having gotten privily under the hill, they bound Agir and cast him down, and left him at the foot of the hill and returned to their lord. But the Israelites descended from their city and came unto him, and loosed him and brought him to Bethulia, and presented him to the governors of the city, which were in those days, Ozias, the son of Micah, of the tribe of Simeon, and Cabras, the son of Gothaniel, and Carmus, the son of Melchiel. And they called together all the ancients of the city, and all their youth ran together, and their women, to the assembly. And they set Agior in the midst of all their people. Then Ozias asked him of that which was done. And he answered and declared unto them the words of the council of Holofernes, and all the words that he had spoken in the midst of the princes of Assur, and whatsoever Holofernes had spoken proudly against the house of Israel. Then the people fell down and worshipped the Almighty and cried unto the Most High, saying, O Almighty God of heaven, behold their pride and pity the lowest state of our nation, and look upon the face of those that are sanctified unto thee this day, then they comforted Achior and praised him greatly. And Ozias took him out of the assembly unto his house and made a feast to the elders. And they called on the Most High of Israel all that night for help. Chapter 7 The next day, Holofernes commanded all his army and all his people which were come to take his part that they should remove their camp against Bethulia, to take aforehand the ascents of the hill country and to make war against the children of Israel. Then their strong men removed their camps in that day, and the army of the men of war was an hundred and seventy thousand footmen and twelve thousand horsemen, besides the baggage and other men that were afoot among them, a very great multitude. And they camped in the valley near unto Bethulia, by the fountain. And they spread themselves in breadth over Dothium, even to Balmain, and in length from Bethulia unto Chiamon, which is over against Estrelon. Now the children of Israel, when they saw the multitude of them, was, were greatly troubled, and said every one to his neighbor, Now will these men lick up the face of the earth, for neither the high mountains, nor the valleys, nor the hills are able to bear their weight. Then every man took up his weapons of war, and when they had kindled fires upon the towers, they remained and watched all that night. But in the second day, Holofernes brought forth all his horsemen in the sight of the children of Israel, which were in Bethulia, and viewed the passages up to the city, and came to the fountains of their waters, and took them, and set garrisons of men of war over them. And he himself removed toward his people. Then came unto him all the chief of the children of Esau, and all the governors of the people of Moab, and the captains of the sea coast, and said, Let our Lord now hear a word, that there be not an overthrow in thine army. For this people of the children of Israel do not trust in their spears, but in the height of the mountains wherein they dwell, because it is not easy to come up to the tops of their mountains. Now therefore, my Lord, fight not against them in battle array, and there shall not so much as one man of thy people perish. Remain in thy camp, and keep all the men of thine army, and let thy servants get into their hands the fountain of water, which is issueth forth of the foot of the mountain. For all the inhabitants of Bethulia have their water thence, so shall thirst kill them, and they shall give up their city, and we and our people shall go up to the tops of the mountains that are near, and will camp upon them to watch that none go out of the city. 
So they and their wives and their children shall be consumed with famine, and before the sword come against them, they shall be overthrown in the streets where they dwell. Thus shall you render them an evil reward, because they rebelled, and met not thy person peaceably. And these words pleased Holofernes and all his servants, and he appointed to do as they had spoken. So the camp of the children of Ammon departed, and with them five thousand of the Assyrians. And they pitched in the valley, and took the waters, and the fountains of the waters of the children of Israel. Then the children of Esau went up with the children of Ammon, and camped in the hill country over against Dothiam. And they sent some of them toward the south, and toward the east, over against Ekrabel, which is near unto Chusi, that is upon the brook Machmer. And the rest of the army of the Assyrians camped in the plain, and covered the face of the whole land, and their tents and carriages were pitched to a very great multitude. Then the children of Israel cried unto the Almighty their power, because their heart failed. For all their enemies had compassed them round about, and there was no way to escape out from among them. Thus all the company of Assur remained about them, both their footmen, chariots, and horsemen, four and thirty days, so that all their vessels of water failed all the inhabitants of Bethulia. And the cisterns were emptied, and they had not water to drink their fill for one day for they gave them drink by measure. Therefore their young children were out of heart, and their women and young men fainted for thirst, and fell down in the streets of the city, and by the passages of the gates, and there was no longer any strength in them. Then all the people assembled to Ozias and to the chief of the city, both young men and women and children, and cried with a loud voice and said before all the elders the most high be judge between us and you for you have done us great injury in that ye have not required peace of the children of Assur. for now we have no helper but the most high hath sold us into their hands that we should be thrown down before them with thirst and great destruction now therefore call them unto you, and deliver the whole city for a spool to the people of Holofernes and to all his army. For it is better for us to be made a spoil unto them than to die for thirst. For we will be his servants that our souls may live, and not see the death of our infants before our eyes, nor our wives, nor our children to die. We take to witness against you the heaven and the earth, and our most high and power of our fathers which punisheth us according to our sins and the sins of our fathers that he do not according as we have said this day then there was great weeping with one consent in the midst of the assembly and they cried unto the most high almighty with a loud voice then said Ozias to them brethren be of good courage let us yet endure five days, in the which space the Most High, our power, may turn his mercy toward us, for he will not forsake us utterly. And if these days pass, and there come no help unto us, I will do according to your word. And he dispersed the people, every one to their own charge. And they went unto the walls and towers of the city, and sent the women and children into their houses. And they were very low brought in the city. Chapter 8 Now at that time Judith heard thereof, which was the daughter of Merari, the son of Ox, the son of Joseph, the son of Oziel, the son of Elsia, the son of Ananias, the son of Gideon, the son of Raphaim, the son of Akito, the son of Eliu, the son of Eliab, the son of Nathaniel, the son of Samael, 
the son of Salasadai, the son of Israel. And Manasseh was her husband of her tribe and kindred who died in the barley harvest. For as he stood overseeing them that bound sheaves in the field, the heat came upon his head and fell, and he fell on his bed and died in the city of Bethulia. And they buried him with his fathers in the field between Dothaim and Balamo. So Judith was a widow in her house three years and four months. And she made her tent upon the top of her house and put on sackcloth upon her loins and wear her widow's apparel. And she fasted all the days of her widowhood, save the eaves of the Sabbaths and the Sabbaths and the eaves of the new moons and the new moons and the feasts and solemn days of the house of Israel. She was also of a goodly countenance and very beautiful to behold. And her husband Manassas had left her gold and silver and men servants and maid servants and cattle and lands, and she remained upon them. And there was none that gave her an ill word, for she feared the Most High greatly. Now when she heard the evil words of the people against the governor, that they fainted for lack of water, for Judith had heard all the words that Ozias had spoken unto them, and that he had sworn to deliver the city unto the Assyrians after five days. Then she sent her waiting woman that had the government of all the things that she had, to call Ozias and Cabris and Charmis, the ancients of the city. And they came unto her, and she said unto them, Hear me now, O ye governors of the inhabitants of Bethulia, for your words that ye have spoken before the people this day are not right. Touching this oath which ye made and pronounced between the Most High and you, and have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, unless within these days the Most High turn to help you. And now who are you that have tempted the Most High this day, and stand instead of the Most High among the children of men? And now try the Most High Almighty, but ye shall never know anything. For you cannot find the depth of the heart of man, neither can you perceive the things that he thinketh. Then how can you search out the Most High? that have made all these things and know his mind and comprehend his purpose. Nay, my brethren, provoke not the Most High our power to anger, for if he will not help us within these five days, he hath power to defend us when he will, even every day, or to destroy us before our enemies. Do not bind the counsels of the Most High our Almighty for the Most High is not as man, that he may be threatened. Neither is he as the Son of Man, that he should be wavering. Therefore let us wait for salvation of him, and call upon him to help us, and he will hear our voice if it please him. For there arose none in our age, neither is there any now in these days, neither tribe, nor family, nor people, nor city among us, which worship gods made with hands, as hath been aforetime. For the which cause our fathers were given to the sword, and for a spoil, and had a great fall before our enemies. But we know none other God, therefore we trust that he will not despise us, nor any of our nation. For if we be taken so, all Judea shall lie waste, and our sanctuary shall be spoiled, and he will require the profanation thereof at our mouth, and the slaughter of our brethren, and the captivity of the country, and the desolation of our inheritance, will he turn upon our heads among the Gentiles, wheresoever we shall be in bondage, and we shall be an offense and a reproach to all them that possess us. For our servitude shall not be directed to favor, 
but the Most High our power shall turn it to dishonor. Now therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, because their hearts depend on us, and the sanctuary and the house and the altar rest upon us. Moreover, let us give thanks to the Almighty, our power, which trieth us even as he did our fathers. Remember what things he did to Abraham, and how he tried Isaac, and what happened to Jacob in Mesopotamia of Syria, when he kept the sheep of Laban his mother's brother. For he hath not tried us in the fire as he did them, for the examination of their hearts. Neither hath he taken vengeance on us, but the Most High doth scourge them that come near unto him to admonish him. Then said Ozias to her, All that you have spoken, have you spoken with a good heart, and there is none that may gainsay your words. For this is not the first day wherein your wisdom is manifested. But from the beginning of your days all the people have known your understanding because the disposition of your heart is good. But the people were very thirsty and compelled us to do unto them as we have spoken, and to bring an oath upon ourselves which we will not break. Therefore now pray you for us, because you are a godly woman, and the Most High will send us rain to fill our cisterns, and we shall faint no more. Then said Judith unto them, Hear me, and I will do a thing which shall go throughout all generations to the children of our nation. Yet shall stand this night in the gate, and I will go forth with my waiting woman. And within the days that ye have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, the Most High will visit Israel by mine hand. But inquire not ye of my act. For I will not declare it unto you till the things be finished that I do. Then said Ozias and the princess unto her, Go in peace, and the Most High Almighty be before thee, to take vengeance on our enemies. So they returned from the tent and went to their wards. Chapter 9 Judith fell upon her face and put ashes upon her head, and uncovered the sackcloth wherewith she was clothed. And about the time that the incense of that evening was offered in Jerusalem, in the house of the Most High, Judith cried with a loud voice and said, O Most High, Almighty power of my father Simeon, to whom you gave us a sword to take vengeance of the strangers, who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her, and discovered the thigh to her shame, and polluted her virginity to her reproach. For you have said, It shall not be so, and yet they did so. Wherefore you gave us their rules, rulers to be slain, so that they died their bed and blood, being deceived, and smote us the servants with their lords and the lords upon their thrones and has given their wives for a prey, and their daughters to be captives, and all their spools to be divided among thy dear children, which were moved with thy zeal, and abhorred the pollution of their blood, and called upon thee for aid. O Most High, O my Most High, hear me also a widow, for you has wrought not only those things, but also the things which fell out before, and which ensued after. For you has wrought not only those things, but also the things which fell out before, and which ensued after. You has thought upon the things which are now, and which are to come. Yea, what things you didst determine were ready at hand, and said, Lo, we are here. For all thy ways are prepared, and thy judgments are in thy foreknowledge. For behold, the Assyrians are multiplied in their power. They are exalted with horse and man. They glory in the strength of their footmen. They trust in shield and spear and bow and sling. And know not that you are the Most High that breakest the battles. The Most High is thy name. 
Throw down their strength in thy power, and bring down their force in thy wrath. For they have purpose to defile thy sanctuary, and to pollute the tabernacle where thy glorious name resteth and to cast down with the sword the horn of thine altar. Behold their pride, and send thy wrath upon their heads. Give into mine hand, which am a widow, the power that I have conceived. Smite by the deceit of my lips the servant with the prince, and the prince with the servant. Break down their stateliness by the hand of a woman, for thy power standeth not in multitude, nor the might in strong men. For you are a most high God of the afflicted, and a helper of the oppressed, an upholder of the weak, a protector of the forlorn, a savior of them that are without hope. I pray thee, I pray thee, O most high God of my Father, and God of the inheritance of Israel, power of the heavens and earth, creator of the waters, king of every creature, hear you my prayer. And make my speech and deceit to be their wound and stripe, who have purposed cruel things against thy covenant and thy hallowed house, and against the top of Zion, and against the house of thy possession of thy children. And make every nation and tribe to acknowledge that you are the most high of all power and might, and that there is none other that protected the people of Israel but you. Chapter 10 Now after that she had ceased to cry unto the Most High of Israel, and had made an end of all these words. She rose where she had fallen down, and called her maid and went down into the house in which she abode in the Sabbath days and in her feast days, and pulled off the sackcloth which she had on, and put off the garments of her widowhood, and washed her body all over with water, and anointed herself with precious ointment, and braided the hair of her head, and put on a tire upon it, and put on her garments of gladness wherewith she was clad during the life of Manasseh, her husband. And she took sandals upon her feet, and put about her bracelets, and her chains, and her rings, and her earrings, and all her ornaments, and decked herself bravely to allure the eyes of all men that should see her. Then she gave her maid a bottle of wine and a cruise of oil, and filled a bag with parched corn, and lumps of figs, and with fine bread. So she folded all these things together, and laid them upon her. Thus they went forth to the gate of the city of Bethulia, and found standing there Ozias and the ancients of the city, Capris and Carmus. And when they saw her, that her countenance was altered, and her apparel was changed, they wondered at her beauty very greatly, and said unto her, The Almighty, the Most High of our fathers, give thee favor, and accomplish thine enterprises to the glory of the children of Israel, and to the exalt exaltation of Jerusalem. Then they worshipped the Most High, and she said unto them, Command the gates of the city to be opened unto me that I may go forth to accomplish the things whereof ye have spoken with me. So they commanded the young men to open unto her as she had spoken. And when they had done so, Judith went out, she and her maid with her. And the men of the city looked after her until she was gone down the mountain, until she had passed the valley and could see her no more. Thus they went straight forth in the valley. And the first watch of the Assyrians met her, and took her, and asked her, Of what people are you, and whence comest you, and whither goest you? And she said, I am a woman of the Hebrews, and am fled from them, for they shall be given you to be consumed. And I am coming before Holofernes, the chief captain of your army, to declare words of truth. And I will show him a way whereby he shall go and win all the hill country without losing the body or life of any one of his men. 
Now when the men heard her words, and beheld her countenance, they wondered greatly at her beauty, and said unto her, Thou hast saved thy life, in that thou hast hasted to come down to the presence of our Lord. Now therefore come to his tent, and some of us shall conduct thee, until they have delivered thee to his hands. And when thou standest before him, be not afraid in thine heart, but show unto him according to thy word, and he will entreat thee well. Then they chose out of them a hundred men to accompany her and her maid, and they brought her to the tent of Holofernes. Then was there a concourse throughout all the camp, for her coming was noised among the tents, and they came about her, as she stood without the tent of Holofernes, till they told him of her. And they wondered at her beauty, and admired the children of Israel because of her. And every one said to his neighbor, Who would despise this people that have among them such women? Surely it is not good that one man of them be left who being let go might deceive the whole earth. And they that lay near Holofernes went out, and all his servants, and they brought her into the tent. Now Holofernes rested upon his bed under a canopy, which was woven with purple and gold and emeralds and precious stones. So they showed him of her, and he came out before his tent with silver lamps going before him. And when Judith was come before him and his servants, they all marveled at the beauty of her countenance. And she fell down upon her face and did reverence unto him, and his servants took her up. Chapter 11 Then said Holofernes unto her, Woman, be of good comfort, fear not in thine heart, for I never heard any that was willing to serve Nebuchadnezzar, the king of all the earth. Now therefore, if thy people that dwelleth in the mountains had not set light by me, I would not have lifted up my spear against them. But they have done these things to themselves. But now tell me whether thou art fled from them, and art come unto us. For thou art come for safeguard. Be of good comfort, thou shalt live this night and hereafter. For none shall hurt thee, but entreat thee well, as they do the servants of King Nebuchadnezzar, my lord. Then Judith said unto him, Receive the words of thy servant, and suffer thine handmaid to speak in thy presence, and I will declare no lie to my lord this night. And if thou wilt follow the words of thine handmaid, the Most High will bring the thing perfectly to pass by thee, and my Lord shall not fail of his purposes. As Nebuchadnezzar, king of all the earth, liveth, and as his power liveth, who hath sent thee for the upholding of every living thing, for not only men shall serve him by thee, but also the beasts of the field, and the cattle, and the fowls of the air, shall live by the power under Nebuchadnezzar, Nebuchadnezzar and all his house. For we have heard of thy wisdom and thy policies, and it is reported in all the earth that you only are excellent in all the kingdom, and mighty in knowledge, and wonderful in feats of war. Now as concerning the matter which Achior did speak in thy counsel, we have heard his words, for the men of Bethulia saved him. And he declared unto them all that he had spoken unto thee. Therefore, our Lord and Governor, reject not his word, but lay it up in thine heart, for it is true. For our nation shall not be punished, neither can the sword prevail against them, except they sin against their God. And now, that my Lord be not defeated and frustrate of his purpose, even death is now fallen upon them, and their sin hath overtaken them, wherewith they will provoke their God to anger, whensoever they shall do that which is not fit to be done. For their victuals fail them, and all their water is scant, and they have determined to lay hands upon the cattle, and purpose to consume all those things, 
that Most High has forbidden them to eat by his laws, and are resolved to spend the first fruits of the corn and the tents of wine and oil, which they had sanctified, and reserved for their priests that serve in Jerusalem before the face of our God. The which things it is not lawful for any of the people so much as to touch with their hands. For they have sent some to Jerusalem, because they also that dwell there have done the like, to bring them a license from the senate. Now when they shall bring them word, they will forthwith do it, and they shall be given to thee to be destroyed the same day. Wherefore I, thy handmaid, knowing all this, am fled from their presence, and the Most High hath sent me to work things with thee, whereat all the earth shall be astonished, and whosoever shall hear it. For thy servant is religious, and serveth the Most High of heaven day and night. Now therefore, my Lord, I will remain with thee, and thy servant will go out by night into the valley, and I will pray unto the Most High, and he will tell me when they have committed their sins. And I will come and show it unto thee, then you shall go forth with all thine army, and there shall be none of them that shall resist thee. And I will lead thee through the midst of Judea, until you come before Jerusalem. And I will set thy throne in the midst thereof, and thou shalt drive them as sheep that have no shepherd. And a dog shall not so much as open his mouth at thee. For these things were told me according to my foreknowledge, and they were declared unto me and I am sent to tell you. Then her words pleased Holofernes and all his servants, and they marveled at her wisdom and said, there is, not so, there is not such a woman from one end of the earth to the other, both for beauty of face and wisdom of words. Likewise Holofernes said unto her, The Most High hath done well to send thee before the people that strength might be in our hands and destruction upon them that lightly regard my Lord. And now you are both beautiful in thy countenance and witty in thy words. Surely if thou do as thou hast spoken, the Most High shall be my God, and thou shalt dwell in the house of King Nebuchadnezzar, and shall be renowned throughout the whole earth. Chapter 12 Then he commanded to bring her in where his plate was set, and bade that they should prepare for her of his own meats, and that she should drink of his own wine. And Judith said, I will not eat thereof, lest there be an offense, but provision shall be made for me of the things that I have brought. Then Holofernes said unto her, if thy provision, provision should fail, how should we give thee the like? For there be none with us of thy nation. Then said Judith unto him, As thy soul liveth, my lord, thine handmaid shall not spend those things that I have, before the Most High work by mine hand the things that he hath determined. Then the servants of Holofernes brought her into the tent, and she slept till midnight. And she arose when it was toward the morning watch, and sent to Holofernes, saying, Let my lord now command that thine handmaid may go forth unto prayer. Then Holofernes commanded his guard that they should not stay her. Thus she abode in the camp three days, and went out in the night into the valley of Bethulia, and washed herself in a fountain of water by the camp. And when she came out, she besought the Most High, Almighty God of Israel to direct her way to the raising up of the children of her people. So she came in clean and remained in the tent until she did eat her meat at evening. And in the fourth day Holofernes made a feast of his own servants only and called none of the officers to the banquet. Then said he to Bagoas the eunuch who had charge over all that he had, Go now and persuade this Hebrew woman which is with thee, that she come unto us and eat and drink with us. For lo, it will be a shame for our person if we shall let such a woman go, not having had her company. 
for if we draw her not unto us, she will laugh us to scorn. Then went Bagoas from the presence of Holofernes and came to her, and he said, Let not this fair damsel fear to come to my lord and to be honored in his presence, and drink wine and be merry with us, and be made this day as one of the daughters of the Assyrians, which serve in the house of Nebuchadnezzar. Then said Judith unto him, Who am I now that I should gainsay my lord? Surely whatsoever pleaseth him I will do speedily, and it shall be my joy unto the day of my death. So she arose and decked herself with her apparel and all her woman's attire, and her maid went and laid soft skins on the ground for her over against Holofernes, which she had received of Bagoas for her daily use, that she might sit and eat upon them. Now when Judith came in and sat down, Holofernes' heart was ravished with her, and his mind was moved, and he desired greatly her company, for he waited a time to deceive her from the day that he had seen her. Then said Holofernes unto her, Drink now, and be merry with us. So Judith said, I will drink now, my lord, because my life is magnified in me this day more than all the days since I was born. Then she took and ate and drank before him what her maid had prepared. And Holofernes took great delight in her and drank more wine than he had drunk at any time in one day since he was born. Chapter 13 Now when the evening was come, his servants made haste to depart. And Bagoaz shut his tent without, and dismissed the waiters from the presence of his lord. And they went to their beds, for they were all weary, because the feast had been long. And Judith was left alone in the tent, and Holofernes lying along upon his bed, for he was filled with wine. Now Judith had commanded her maid to stand without her bedchamber, and to wait for her coming forth, as she did daily. For she said she would go forth to her prayers, and she spake to Bagoaz according to the same purpose. So all went forth, and none was left in the bedchamber, neither little nor great. Then Judith, standing by his bed, said in her heart, O Most High, Almighty of all power, look at this present upon the works of mine hands for the exaltation of Jerusalem. For now is thy time to help thine inheritance and to execute thine enterprises to the destruction of the enemies which are risen against us. Then she came to the pillar of the bed which was at Holofernes' head and took down his falchion from thence and approached to his bed and took hold of the hair of his head and said, Strengthen me, O Most High, power of Israel this day. And she smote twice upon his neck with all her might, and she took away his head from him, and tumbled his body down from the bed, and pulled down the canopy from the pillars, and anon after she went forth, and gave Holofernes' head to her maid. And she put it in her bag of meat, so they twain went together according to their custom unto prayer. And when they passed the camp, they compassed the valley and went up the mountain of Bethulia and came to the gates thereof. Then sat Judith afar off to the watchman at the gate. Open, open now the gate, the Most High, even our power is with us, to show his power yet in Jerusalem and his forces against the enemy as he hath even done this day. Now when the men of her city heard her voice, they made haste to go down to the gate of their city, and they called the elders of the city. And then they ran all together, both small and great, for it was strange unto them that she was come. So they opened the gate and received them, and made a fire for a light, and stood round about them. Then she said to them with a loud voice, Praise, praise the Most High, praise the Most High, I say, for he hath not taken away his mercy from the house of Israel, but hath destroyed our enemies by my hands this night. So she took the head out of the bag and showed it, 
and said unto them, Behold, the head of Holofernes, the chief captain of the army of Assur, and behold, the canopy wherein he did lie in his drunkenness, and the Most High hath smitten him by the hand of a woman. As the Most High liveth, who hath kept me in my way that I went, my countenance hath deceived him to his destruction, and yet hath he not committed sin with me to defile and shame me. Then all the people were wonderfully astonished and bowed themselves and worshipped the Most High and said with one accord, Blessed be you, O our Father, which has this day brought to naught the enemies of thy people. Then said Ozias unto her, O daughter, blessed are you of the Most High Almighty above all the women upon the earth. And blessed be the Most High Almighty, which hath created the heavens and the earth, which hath directed thee to the cutting off of the head of the chief of our enemies. For this thy confidence shall not depart from the heart of men, which remember the power of the Most High for ever. And the Most High turn these things to thee for a perpetual praise, to visit thee in good things, because thou hast not spared the life for the affliction of our nation, but has revenged our ruin, walking a straight way before our Father. And all the people said, So be it, so be it. Chapter 14 then said Judith unto them, Hear me now, my brethren, and take this head, and hang it upon the highest place of your walls. And so soon as the morning shall appear, and the sun shall come forth upon the earth, take ye every one his weapons, and go forth every valiant man out of the city, and set ye a captain over them, as though you would go down into the field toward the watch of the Assyrians." but go not down. Then they shall take their armor and shall go into their camp and raise up the captains of the army of Assur and shall run to the tent of Holofernes, but shall not find him. Then fear shall fall upon them and they shall flee before your face. So you and all that inhabit the coast of Israel shall pursue them and overthrow them as they go. But before ye do these things, call me Achiar the Ammonite, that he may see and know him that despised the house of Israel, and that sent him to us, as it were, to his death. Then they called Achiar out of the house of Ozias, and when he was come, and saw the head of Holofernes in a man's hand in the assembly of the people, he fell down on his face, and his spirit failed. But when they re had recovered him, he fell at Judith's feet and reverenced her and said, Blessed are you in all the tabernacles of Judah, and in all nations which hearing thy name shall be astonished. Now therefore tell me all the things that thou hast done in these days. Then Judith declared unto him in the midst of the people all that she had done, from the day that she went forth until that hour she spake unto them. And when she had left off speaking, the people shouted with a loud voice and made a joyful noise in their city. And when Achir had seen all that the Most High power of Israel had done, he believed in the Most High greatly and circumcised the flesh of his foreskin and was joined into the house of Israel unto this day. And as soon as the morning arose, they hanged the head of Holofernes upon the wall and every man took his weapons, and they went forth by bands unto the straits of the mountain. But when the Assyrians saw them, they sent to their leaders, which came to their captains and tribunes, and to every one of their rulers. So they came to Holofernes' tent, and said to him that had the charge of all his things, Waken now our Lord! For the slaves have been bold to come down against us to battle, that they may be utterly destroyed. Then went in Bogalus and knocked at the door of the tent, for he thought that he had slept with Judith. But because none answered, he opened it and went into the bedchamber and found him cast upon the floor dead, and his head was taken from him. Therefore he cried with a loud voice, with weeping and sighing, and a mighty cry, and rent his garments. 
After he went into the tent where Judith lodged, and when he found her not, he leaped out to the people and cried, These slaves have dealt treacherously. One woman of the Hebrews hath brought shame upon the house of King Nebuchadnezzar. For behold, Holofernes lieth upon the ground without a head. When the captains of the Assyrian's army heard these words, they rent their coats, and their minds were wonderfully troubled. And there was a cry and a very great noise throughout the camp. Chapter 15 and when they that were in the tents heard, they were astonished at the thing that was done. And fear and trembling fell upon them, so that there was no man that durst abide in the sight of his neighbor. But rushing out altogether, they fled into every way of the plain and of the hill country. They also that had camped in the mountains round about Bethulia fled away. Then the children of Israel, every one that was a warrior among them, rushed out upon them. Then sent Ozias to Betamastim, and to Babai, and to and Kobai, and Kola, and to all the coasts of Israel, such as should tell the things that were done, and that all should rush forth upon their enemies to destroy them. Now when the children of Israel heard it, they all fell upon them with one consent, and slew them unto Kobai. Likewise also they that came from Jerusalem, and from all the hill country, for men had told them what things were done in the camp of their enemies. And they that were in Galad and in Galilee chased them with a great slaughter until they were past Damascus and the borders thereof. And the residue that dwelt at Bethulia fell upon the camp of Assur, and spoiled them, and were greatly enriched. And the children of Israel that returned from the slaughter had that which remained, and the villages and the cities that were in the mountains and in the plain got many spoils, for the multitude was very great. Then Joachim the high priest and the ancients of the children of Israel that dwelt in Jerusalem came to behold the good things that the Most High had showed to Israel, and to see Judith, and to salute her. And when they came unto her, they blessed her with one accord, and said unto her, You are the exaltation of Jerusalem. You are the great glory of Israel. You are the great rejoicing of our nation. You have done all these things by thine hand. You have done much good to Israel, and the Most High is pleased therewith. Blessed be you of the Almighty Most High for evermore. And all the people said, So be it. And the people spoiled the camp the space of thirty days, and they gave unto Judith Holofernes' tent, and all his plate, and beds, and vessels, and all his stuff. And she took it, and laid it on her mule, and made ready her carts, and laid them thereon. Then all the women of Israel ran together to see her, and blessed her, and made a dance among them for her. And she took branches in her hand, and gave also to the women that were with her. And they put a garland of olive upon her, and her maid that was with her. And she went before all the people in the dance, leading all the women. And all the men of Israel followed in their armor, with garlands and with songs in their mouths. Chapter 16 Then Judith began to sing this thanksgiving in all Israel, and all the people sang after her this song of praise. And Judith said, Begin unto my Most High with timbrels, sing unto the Almighty with cymbals, tune unto him a new psalm, exalt him and call upon his name. For the Most High breaketh the battles, for among the camps in the midst of the people he hath delivered me out of the hands of them that persecuted me. Assur came out of the mountains from the north, he came with ten thousands of his army. The multitude whereof stopped the torrents, and their horsemen have covered the hills. He bragged that he would burn up my borders and kill my young men with the sword and dashed the sucking children against the ground, 
and make mine infants as a prey and my virgins as a spoil. But the Almighty Most High hath disappointed them by the hand of a woman. For the Mighty One did not fall by the young men, neither did the sons of the Titans smite him, nor high giants set upon him. But Judith, the daughter of Merari, weakened him with the beauty of her countenance. For she put off the garment of her widowhood for the exaltation of those that were oppressed in Israel, and anointed her face with ointment, and bound her hair in attire, and took a linen garment to deceive him. Her sandals ravished his eyes, her beauty took his mind prisoner, and the falcian passed through his neck. The Persians quaked at her boldness, and the Medes were daunted at her hardiness. Then my afflicted shouted for joy, and my weak ones cried aloud, but they were astonished. These lifted up their voices, but they were overthrown. The sons of the damsels have pierced them through, and wounded them as fugitives' children. They perished by the battle of the Most High. I will sing unto the Most High a new song. O Almighty, you are great and glorious, wonderful in strength and invincible. Let all creatures serve thee, for you spake us, and they were made. You did send forth thy spirit, and it created them. And there is none that can resist thy voice. For the mountains shall be moved from their foundations with the waters. The rocks shall melt as wax at thy present presence, yet you are merciful to them that fear thee. For all sacrifice is too little for a sweet savour unto thee, and all the fat is not sufficient for thy burnt offering. But he that feareth the Most High is great at all times. Woe to the nations that rise up against my kindred. The Most High Almighty will take vengeance of them in the day of judgment, and putting fire and worms in their flesh, and they shall fill them and weep for ever. Now as soon as they entered into Jerusalem, they worshipped the Most High. And as soon as the people were purified, they offered their burnt offerings, and their free offerings, and their gifts. Judith also dedicated all the stuff of Holofernes which the people had given her, and gave the canopy which she had taken out of his bedchamber for a gift unto the Most High. So the people continued feasting in Jerusalem before the sanctuary for the space of three months, and Judith remained with them. After this time, everyone returned to his own inheritance, and Judith went to Bethulia and remained in her own possession, and was in her time honorable in all the country. And many desired her, but none knew her all the days of her life. After that Manassas, her husband, was dead and was gathered to his people. But she increased more and more in honor and waxed old in her husband's house, being a hundred and five years old, and made her maid free. So she died in Bethulia, and they buried her in the cave of her husband Manassas. And the house of Israel lamented her seven days, and before she died, she did distribute her goods to all them that were nearest of kindred to Manassas, her husband, and to them that were the nearest of her kindred. And there was none that made the children of Israel any more afraid in the days of Judith, nor a long time after her death.